Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our after match reaction from Sean McGrover's 3 Finn Habs 0 at Tallis Stadium. A very dominant victory for Sean McGrover's. Uh, we literally, after arriving in the freezing cold yeah. home, or well, I suppose we could call this home uh, at this point now. Um, but yeah, what did you think of the game? Obviously, goals from uh, Roberto Lopez, Dylan Watts, and Aaron Green. Um, but. You know, Rovers for me very dominant from from the word go. How did you feel about it? from from a coach's yeah. perspective? You know, Kieran has his badges and is very well respected in the coaches' game. So, from your point of view, from a, from a tactical point of view, how would you have uh, how would you analyze it? I suppose you could say. Um, well, first of all, I would have said that um, four games in ten days. I would have thought that the game was going to be quite uh, flat. I thought there was going to be loads of changes, which there was on Rovers' side. And Rovers obviously had have the game on, on Friday against Pats. Um, so to be expected, there was a lot of changes. Um, I think more so the manager was thinking to win the game against uh, Finn Harps. It was Finn Harps' fourth game as well in 10 days. So I think he was, he was obviously thinking that their second string would probably beat them because it'd be fresher. Um, they wouldn't have any fatigue, and Finn Harps would have cumu accumulated fatigue and also had to travel. So I think second Monday in Dublin. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. So I think obviously he must have been thinking to himself, right? Um, I make these changes, and we'll we'll still most likely win the game, but I'll have people on the bench to change the game if if I need to. I, and I thought yeah, st still had a pretty strong bench as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like a, yeah. They, I know they brought on Brandon Kavanagh in the second half and they were able to take off McInnes. Mm. So they still had a strong enough enough bench, you know, they still brought on Vojic and they brought on Joey O'Brien. You know, these aren't these aren't bad players. So I, I can't really judge uh Vojic yet because not many people have seen, you know, that that much of them. Uh Rovers fans even will tell you that too. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mean to cut you off, what were you saying? No, um, and I think obviously straight away um, Rovers had a lot of the ball, which was to be expected. Um, Finn Harps, uh, it seemed that when they didn't have the ball, the wingers were very very narrow. Um, so I think you, I think they were expecting that Rovers were going to play um, maybe a diamond in the middle, so that um, the, the the wingers were going to tuck in and almost mark the, the two outside in the diamond. But that wasn't what happened. They, were, they obviously they played with very high and wide wingers. So um, it seemed to be Aaron Green up top and Jack Burn out wide right and Dan Carr out on the wide left. Yeah, you know. So but, uh, I thought you know Burn started well and then kind of just kind of phased out of the game a little bit. I mean he was decent on the ball, but he 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 for me. I'd just like to see him step it up a gear. I think he, I think he still has a few gears in him mm -hmm. to kind of bring it up, and I haven't seen that from him yet. Yeah. From all the games, you know, I, I've seen him, and I was really excited to see what he was going to do. So far in the first couple of games, he hasn't done a lot, and I'm, you know, I'm not slating by saying that. I just feel like he has a lot more in the tank that he, he mm -hmm. I think he will get better progressively as mm -hmm. as he gets kind of used to it. I, I still don't think that's his best position at wide right. I think Dan Carr is quite good out on the left because. The thing about him is, is he's a quite tall, strong fella as well. So not only can he get in behind because he's pacey, but he can also take the ball in, lay it off, and then kind of he was bringing the fullback in Sean Cavanagh a lot. He was bringing him into play. I felt a lot more. And then I thought Sam Bowen did all right covering in for Ethan Boyle. You know, on the right, he never really looked like anybody was going to get past him. Lee Grace, brilliant again. Rolls Royce at the back. Uh, Lopez, he gets his goal solid as well. Do you think Carr is better out wide or up front? I think judging I don't think he's a centre forward, so I think out wide suits him for the moment. You know, I think maybe as time progresses, he will develop into a centre forward as he kind of gets older in his career. But right now, because mm. he's pacey, he's tricky, he he can cause teams problems. I think he's better as a wide player at the moment, and I think that's why he didn't go well. I know he. He brought him on against Bowles and kind of played him up front, mm -hmm. but he was down a man, you know. I think he was he was perfect though for that scenario against Bowles because because as you said he he has pace, but um, when he's sitting up there in his zone and Rovers obviously looking to counter attack, he kind of stretches the field, stretches the play. Yeah. Um, but maybe if you're in a scenario where um, like today you have a lot of the ball, I don't know if he's probably the right person to have in the middle. 
trying to make uh, runs and create some space. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Someone like a Green, maybe, or yeah, along those and lines. Again, and again, he was another player who was brilliant tonight. I felt, I felt as though he chased down every team. There was a couple of times where the Finn Harps goalkeeper got caught in the ball. You know, he should have just cleared his lines. The defence were kind of not communicating, and sometimes, you know, could have let, mm. in other games it would have led to a goal. I think so. Again, uh, but for me. You know, Watts misses the penalty anyway, kind of going back to the game itself. Uh, Lopez gets the goal not long after. Then I went to the toilet, uh, came back up, and it was a penalty. I seemed to make a habit. Of I did it in the Shells game, didn't I, too? But uh, you would have seen, you said the penalty was soft, I believe. Yeah, no, a few, uh, a few people around me didn't think it was a penalty either. But it's, obviously, it's, it's very hard to see from where, where we were. Like, um, it, looked like, it looked like the Rose player um, was, was tackled. Pretty fairly, like I thought, the Finn Harris player got the ball, but that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? Um, but I suppose it doesn't really matter in the end because he missed um, when he put it over the bar. But um, I feel that today uh, in the game that Rovers, the, the issue that I've seen that because we were, I was at the the last two games, the Bowes game, and I was at the game on Friday. Yeah. And the issues they seem to very very the, the shape is quite good in terms of they create a lot of width and depth and. The players at the back are, are comfortable on the ball, uh, a lot of them, and they were they were cycling it from the left hand side to the right hand side of the field very comfortably, but it's penetrating through the lines, getting it to the midfielder's feet, and even when the midfielders get the feet, they're receiving it in front of the opposition midfielders, so they're not, not penetrating any, any lines. lines yeah, do you know what I mean? And and a, a big thing is uh, from the three midfielders, like Burns and wherever he's playing, whether he's in the mid, uh, wide or whatever, but. The speed of thought, like when they're receiving it, they never seem to have any inclination for what the next pass is. It's more so I get it and then I look and then I play it. Whereas um, you look at maybe like young Cavanagh that came on tonight, you can constantly see him scanning as before he's got the ball. The ball comes from and he's already dinked it to someone or played it. Do you know I what think I mean? he's going to be a very good player, to be honest with you. He's, uh, he was in the Stephen Kenny's first under 21 squad mm. and scored. I think he's a very good player. Even I know Kevin Gilban rides him very highly as well. Yeah. But uh, back to Dylan Watt, because we were talking about missing the penalty. I mean, he, he made up for it then. He went on a amazing run and took a ping. I thought the keeper maybe could have mm -hmm. done better on it. But who am I? I'm not a goalkeeper, so I'm not here to, to judge him. Yeah. Uh, I'll let the, the Finn Harps fans judge him. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it was a good goal. Well taken. And then Aaron Green gets gets the third then. And at, this, at that stage, Rovers were just cruising. We were going into the second half. Or say going into half time, and you know, even talking to people at half time, they, they thought. I remember um, a, a team on my football team's father saying that he had a bet for them to win six 0 Well, a lot of people <laughs> were thinking that they, they yeah, were going to yeah. go to, and really, really dominate. Whereas before the game, we thought it'd only be one or two 0 And yeah. to be to be fair to Finn Harps, and I know Rovers kind of they kind of took their foot off the pedal as well. They made they brought on Kavanagh for McInniff. And then later in the game, they brought on O'Brien and um, Vojic. So for me, they just, I, I, I think they were like, all right, game over. Just took the ga uh, took the foot off the gas, I suppose, a little bit. Now, I know Dan Carr done brilliant for a chance for Aaron Green. Um, yeah, lovely run. Went by one yeah, or two and then people, dinked yeah. it over and gave it to uh, Green. He hit the crossbar, but re realistically, I thought he should have buried it. A lovely first touch, and yeah. then he hit the crossbar. But, Do you think uh, it was over the line? I, not from where I was sitting. No. Not, not from where I was sitting, but maybe, yeah. I don't know, via VAR, via whatever you call it. Uh, uh, what, what about a bit, um, uh, the chance that Kavanagh created as well, when he dinked it over the top, just a little, little tiny chip in the path of, uh, who was it that he played it to? Do you remember at all it was it, who he played it to? It wasn't Carr anyway, it was, uh, it might have been Green. It was Green, but anyway, whatever player who came through, Tried to flick it on. I'm gonna miss it if you if you remember that. But uh, no, I don't remember that. No, no, no. So a lot happened. To be fair, in the game yeah. there was there was different chances. Yeah. Uh, but see, it's great for like there were times like that. Like obviously bringing on someone like that in time of like that. Obviously they're they're, they're going to look brilliant like, because the other team is, is so tired, fatigued. There's so much space for them to play, and it's great. It's kind of it's great to bring on young players. You know, to give yeah. them. Give them a run out. But, that uh, was quite funny as well, uh, from house manager getting set off. Do you see, see what he Don't said? I don't know what exactly happened, but he was up in the stands. It kind of reminded me of Arsene Wenger versus Man United all those years ago. And he walked he up. there like that. 
And uh, <laughs> yeah, he was just kind he of shouting up. stuff down. Yeah, he walked by his shirts and he was like, I said nothing. He was like, I said nothing. That's what he said when yeah. he walked by. Ah, uh, he's, you know, I, I think everybody's happy to have him back in the league and, you know, yeah. fair play to him. But uh, as far as, you know, the match reaction, that's really it. Uh, we're just going to go to Ryan in the Carlisle said He's just going to give us a quick match reaction. Yeah. Uh, so over to you, Ryan. Um, hello, yes, welcome. Um, it's just finished here at the Carlisle Grounds, uh, Bray 3, Wexford 2. To be honest, it was a good game. Um, plenty of goals on show. Obviously, the Wexford fans were down in, in numbers and... Um, to be honest, they made good noise, as did the Bray fans. I'm not sure the attendance was that big here. I think the reports were it was around 400 or so, which is um, it's good to see in a cup game. You're not really going to expect so much, um, but at the same time, um, it was a good game. A uh, good goal scored. I can't even remember who who scored the goals individually. All I know is that um, there were two free kicks. Free kicks scored. First one for Bray went under the wall. It was a pretty impressive free kick, to be fair. Um, and then uh, Wexford started to get back into it Bray were 3-0 up at one stage and the uh, first half finished Bray were 3-0 up uh, second half all of a sudden Wexford started getting back into the game they scored a goal late on I don't think the scoreline 3-2 is a reflection of the game in reality um, I think Bray were the better side and definitely were the stronger team throughout the game but silly mistakes at the back that they'll try to eradicate but I mean again not a lot of the players were first teamers out there uh, forgive me because I'm absolutely freezing but uh, full time scoreline 3-2 and on to the next game so back to you and studio lads thanks very much Ryan for that uh, guys don't forget to uh, like this video and also don't forget to subscribe we're on our way to 5k now at the moment uh, I think we're only about 250 now at this point I could be wrong by the time this has uh, gone out could be could be less uh, but if you could please head over and subscribe or just hit that red button below uh, it would help us out massively and we're on our way to 5k we just reached 20k followers on Instagram today at 8,000 on Twitter so thanks very much for watching we'll speak to you all soon